everybody, and welcome to Let Me Finish. Two men, one story, one million interruptions. I am Jason Harding. And I am Atticus Blake. And welcome to the show. For those of you who don't know, Atticus will tell a story. I have to interrupt that story. He has a half an hour to finish. If I can prevent him from finishing within that half an hour, I win the podcast. If he finishes the story before the half hour is up, he wins the podcast. Last week, Atticus won. And I won the week before that. So right now we are tied for one and one. Um, If you hear this sound... During the story, that means Atticus has gone over time. We will not, however, cut the story so that you will actually hear the entire thing. But just remember, that is the sound of failure. I can't wait to hear what this week's story is. Are you ready to tell a story, Atticus? Oh, I am. So it's a kind of a story about love and loss and high school bullshit and... Oh, boy. So it's about that time I fell in love with my friend and why I am no longer friends with this person. Uh, is it because you fell in love with him? Was it creepy love? Was it like hanging outside the bedroom window kind of love? Well, in high school, it would have been considered creepy because it was <gasps> gay. Was it, was it calling them and then as soon as they pick up the phone, hanging up with your heart beating really fast? It wasn't like killing their cat kind of love, was it? No, it was just creepy because they, well, not creepy. I wouldn't. <laughs> you just admitted it was creepy. No, no, no. It would have been creepy in my, in, in my generation and because it was in high school and because other teenagers just don't get it when you're gay and you're in love with somebody. Okay, I need to ask this question. What's that? They were in high school? We were both in high school. Oh, thank God. Okay, good. I was going to say, it's creepy because they were in high school and I was 29 or something along those lines. What's wrong with that? Just get on with the story. <laughs> okay. So I had this friend, and we'll call him Bobby. Bobby? Who Yes. Okay, Bobby. So as a as a pretense, I became friends with this person simply. Wait, as a pretense a... because you were attracted to them, and so you're like, I'll pretend to be his friend. Um, I actually did care for this person. So you were his friend. It wasn't a pretense. Well, I mean, pretense I, I sounds actually really predatory. First. It sounds like I'm gonna pretend to be his friend until I fuck him. That's what a pretense would be. No, what I'm saying is, I I just meant as a pretense to the story. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just implied that you're a monster. <laughs> no, there's only one monster here. Okay, so you were friends, but you I was wanted... Attra I was deeply attracted to this person. Okay. Very much, very much. What was what was so hunky about him? Uh, he was hot. Well, okay, that's a general term. You, I mean, you could... And could he be... was smart. Okay, he was smart. So he was attractive. And he was a complete dick to me. <gasps> oh, there's nothing more attractive than when the person you like is abusive. Oh, yes, abusive user. Wait a minute, do you think he knew? Oh, he definitely knew. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure at this point. Because I I had a friend in high school who, when I look back on retrospect, it was kind of obvious that he was gay and attracted to me. But I I was clueless at the time. And, uh -huh. uh, was I it didn't that mentally retarded guy that baked cookies for you? Wah, wah. No, this was the guy. Uh, I'm who... the one that's supposed to be telling the story. Yeah, well, too bad. This was the guy who... <laughs> uh, when it was my senior prom, I was taking my girlfriend to the senior prom, and he was like, oh, well, you know, I have a classic car. He had, like, a, a 1954 uh, Mercedes, you know, with a wood dash and gray and really nice. He was like, and I could drive you, and, and oh, yeah, my mom can cut your hair for the prom. Oh, and you can come over to my house and change, and then we can get the car and we can go, and I'm going to dress like a chauffeur and sit in the car and wait for you to come back. And every time I recount this, the idea that he had a crush on me breaks my heart. Because I wasn't, I just thought he was being a yeah, cool guy. Yeah, this didn't break this person's heart. It, he okay. He said, oh, I, well, how can I use this person to my advantage? <laughs> Maybe um, I can get gay so sex it was, out of it. No, I, <laughs> I tried very hard to, nah, I didn't, I didn't go for it, but either way. Okay, so this is, this is, this is your, um, I wanted to say Howard Hughes. This is your John Hughes you know, uh, Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, whatever other... Yeah, except did. Totally Gay, which he never uh, did. Yeah. Okay, this is the totally gay version of one of those one of those movies. So um, he would... We became pretty good friends, and, you know, we're talking sleepovers. We hung out all the time. We worked Wait, at the same Wait, sleepovers? Job. How old were you? Teenagers. You know, you just go over to your friend's house and sleep over. 
Uh, okay. I stopped doing that when I was like 12. Whatever, you never had a bunch of friends come over and be like, oh, we're all drunk and then fall asleep? No, I didn't have friends that would show up drunk as as 13-year-old. Drunk, you get <laughs> drunk together. Were you getting your friends drunk in the hopes <laughs> no. that there would be a gay orgy at some point? No. Like, come on, guys, come on, you're drinking tea and they're drinking whiskey. <laughs> like, come on, take your shit off. It would be so funny. It'd be so funny if I saw your dick right now. No. I'm just okay, saying so, I did not have sleepovers after the age of 13. Well, then you're a fucking weirdo. Everybody else did. I mean, no you, one else had sleepovers a as a boy. Sleepover. You just hung out at your friend's house, and then you're like, ah, ma, I'm going to stay here. And no, you... this is a Massachusetts thing. That's what I think. Yeah, okay. In California, they don't do things like that. Okay. As close as we get to a sleepover is camping. Or you riot. Yeah, or we riot. <laughs> anyway, it, it was a pretty it was a pretty good friendship until I realized that I was in love with this person. And okay, well, how long he, were you friends before the love feelings? A year or so. And how did you know it was love? Because I wanted to put my dick in his face. <laughs> so you were just like going, wow, Bobby sure is a good friend. I love the way he, he we pal around together. I want to put his, my dick in his face. Well, I mean, I knew I was gay at that point, but I was also a Christian who was hiding it. So that's how so – <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he figured it out. He figured it out, um, but he was okay with it at first until he realized that, like, like if he had other friends over and I wasn't invited – I would call him and go, and go, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, I got some friends over. And I would go, oh. And then there was no invite afterwards. You do know that he's treating you like a girlfriend. That's, that is a total high school boyfriend-to-girlfriend move. Except without the sex and dating. Yeah, without all the sex and dating. This was, oh, Jesus, this was 16 years ago. Mm. You know, but to me, I mean, yeah, it, I, I can remember it like yesterday. Maybe he's listening to the podcast. I doubt very highly that Maybe he's a been fuck stalking, about anything I'm stalking doing. you from afar. So you guys were friends for how long before uh, the love feelings? How long? About, a, about a year. Okay, and when do you think he figured it out? When he started teasing me. About being gay? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, joking about uh, me being gay, but also using me in ways that were, you know, hey, can I have a ride somewhere? And I would, he would, he would... I would take him for a ride, and then he'd be like, oh, you're just dropping me off. You know that, right? Wow. Um, or he would borrow money from me, and I had no intention of asking him to pay me back. Um, and I had no problem with lending it to him. I was So this guy is a total dick, and I can rip him apart. This is 15 years ago. He's. I don't give he's a fuck. Like... He's hurting my friend. And right now I'm picturing you as an innocent teenage boy getting used and manipulated by some douche to toboggan who is taking your money and scamming rides off of you based on love feelings. You don't exploit love. That's rule number one. You don't exploit love, even if it's love you don't want. Yeah. Well, um, he would he would come and hang out at my house, and then we would do the sleepover or whatever the fuck you want to call it. He would sleep on the ca one couch, and I would sleep on another. We'd fall asleep watching a movie, whatever. Well, and... you'd fall asleep. He's watching the movie. You're watching him. His, yeah, his face, his face glowing by the flickering light. I'll be fair. That's probably true. I am uh, an intuitive I mean, which, bastard. Which obviously, in I mean, when you're when you're an adult and you're in a situation where you know that something is going to happen, that's okay. But if you're in high school and the other person is a young person who doesn't understand homosexuality, to them obviously they're going to think it's fucking creepy as hell to wake up and have your friend staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> Creepier still if they're in the same sleeping bag as you, and, and their penis is in your anal hole. Yeah. Well, there was this there was this one occasion where he took off his underwear and I found them in whoa, my drawer. Whoa, what? No, whoa, no, no, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What? <laughs> I found I well, yeah, I found a pair of his underwear in my drawer. And you don't and know how they got there. I have no idea how they got there. Is it possible that you were so crazy with love feelings for this person that you stripped him off of his body when he no. wasn't he took them off and put them in my drawer, and I, I brought them to him, and I was like, why did you put these in my drawer? And he's like, I don't know. Why don't you wear them? Oh. And I was like, I, was like, I don't want your fucking farty underwear. Get the hell out of here. Uh, you know, like, it, I was just like, you, that, this isn't even funny. At this, like, why? Is it possible that he was gay and he was afraid of it? I, I've considered that possibility, but again, this is something that happened so long ago. He's... I don't even really know much about him except that he lives with a woman. And it's it's not far from where I live now. I, I really don't give a shit, honestly. Yeah, fuck him. I hope he has herpes on his asshole. 
He probably does because of where he ended up after we stopped being friends, and I can well, continue. That's later. On. That's later in the story. You have yeah. you you're just jumping all over the place. So what had happened was, um, and we're we're starting. We're talking about the reason why we are no longer friends. Okay, right. What year is this? This is 1999. You were in high school in 1999. No, I was done with high school. What had happened? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I dropped out before the end of senior year because I wasn't going to graduate on time. They were going to make me stay for another year. I, oh. I decided to put my head into the books in the, la in the last minute of high school. And it yeah, that never works, does it? <laughs> yeah, they, well, I started getting good grades, but they wanted me to stay for another year. And I'm like, ah, fuck you. I'll just go get my... GED, or otherwise known as good enough diploma, and it was good enough. But either way, there, I dropped out actually because of what happened. So what happened? This is where we're going. This is where this. Oh, is goody! Going. So he had acquired a sum of money for his birthday, I believe. I I I'm, I may be wrong on that. Okay. And what he thought was, we we both happened to uh, have friends. How much money are we talking about? Is this like, like a good chunk of change? I think 200 bucks, but back then gas was only a dollar a gallon. Yeah, back in 1999, gas was a nickel. Gas was a dollar a gallon. You could buy sucking candy if you could get five pounds for a penny. Okay, so I had, I had acquired my first car, which was a rusty Pontiac Grand Am. Those are awesome. Yeah, but it, yeah, quad four engine, you can replace anything in the parts, and, mm -hmm. and it, you can do it on your own. So uh, I was the one with the car. He comes to me, and this is around before Christmas time. Okay, you guys uh, are our, still friends. Our, we're on our Christmas break. Okay, you're still friends. You're still in love with him. He, you think he knows, and he's ex still exploiting you. So we had a friend that had, we had a mutual friend that had moved to Maine. And both of you were in love with him, and he didn't know. No. Oh. <laughs> I know you're trying to make this funny. But the thing is, I, I know damn well you don't even want to try and make it funny. You want to know <laughs> what the fuck happened. <laughs> I don't care, really. I know it's going to end in, end in heartbreak. You're still thinking about this fucking story 16 years later. No, I well, I mean, I just, I just thought this is a story I could tell. So he's so, got a big old wad in his pocket. And what he said was, let's go visit our friend in Maine. Because we haven't seen him in a while, and you've got a car, and you're you're eight, you know, you're eighteen, I'm seventeen, mm -hmm. I I can't just leave and do that, and mm -hmm. and you know, we're just gonna take a day trip. And up you there. drive him all the way to Maine, and he says, you know, you're just dropping me off, right? <laughs> oh, I would. I, the friendship <laughs> would have ended right there. <laughs> it would have ended in a gunshot. That's how it would have ended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he go? Oh, he's buried. Sorry. Wait, how far away is Maine from Massachusetts? How long of a drive are we talking? Five, six hours? We're, we're talking, no, we're talking two hours to... Oh, to, that's right. To, to East Coast. Coast. All of those states are all mashed together. Yeah, no, I mean, my, my vacations are nine hours into Maine, but this is, this is we're talking Old Orchard Beach. It's, it's right there. It, okay. You know, so we decided to take that trip, and we went and picked him up, and his father said, okay, well, I don't see any reason you guys can't go back to... Mass and take our son and and because you know we're all approaching end of high school age, it's uh, okay. And they were cool with it. They didn't know yeah. about the love feelings. We brought him back to Mass with us, and I you know I dropped them off at his place, and I you know we're talking a few days here where we spent in Maine, and then went back, and yeah. that stuff was okay. We we smoked some weed and drank some beers and had fun. Got naked on the beach and killed a couple of drifters and you know. So a you good know, time that's, was had that's by what you do on vacation. Right, exactly. We brought him we brought him back and uh we I they hung out at his place for for a few hours. He called like we had a we had another mutual friend. So we have five friends involved in this story. Uh okay. it's me, uh Bobby and the and three other friends. Mm -hmm. And they decided to meet up at his house. Okay. And he he calls me in, say, a few hours after dropping him off, because I was just bringing my stuff back to the house, we were going to regroup, mm -hmm. have fun. And he goes, you know what we did? And I go, what? And he says, we robbed the house down the street. No. I'm not kidding you. This is in Maine. No, 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 we're back in Massachusetts. Oh, you're back in Massachusetts. After the trip, you come back, and he robbed somebody. The, him and two other friends did it. Oh, my God. Seriously? Very serious. They okay. broke into this person's house and they smashed some shit to pieces, stole some money, and the guy came home and they ran off. Jesus Christ! You sure can pick them. Well, I didn't didn't really see this coming. You know, uh, I mean, I 
He talked to me about doing nefarious things like starting fires, but I thought he was joking. Oh and my he... god, were your love feelings so strong that you did not have your Jiminy Cricket going, gosh, I think this guy's a fucking psychopath. I don't think you should be in love with him at all. Uh, you're probably right. Come on, Pinocchio, let's go! And you're like, no, Ethan, love Where feelings. were you when I was in high school? Oh yeah, you were in your fucking 30s, so you couldn't help I was me. living an adult life. In 1999, I was angry watching The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one wasn't bad. <laughs> the 13th floor was better. We're not getting into this discussion. <laughs> oh, come on, Dark City. You know. But seriously, he was like, yeah, you know, sometimes I just want to set fire to a hobo to watch him burn, and you're like, I want to put my dick in your face. No, and he was really into uh, trying new drugs and things like that. That was his like his hobby. He was he said he's subscribed to Trying New Drugs magazine. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, so this guy not only had big warning signs all over him. He he like he had stickers saying "not safe for consumption" and uh, "use at your own risk." Yeah. Okay. 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 So he he comes forward. He says, "Hey, we committed vandalism and robbery." And the blinders are on. And he says, yeah. "You know what we should do with the money? Oh, we should go hang out in Boston." Now here's the thing. Now, are you sure that you're this about financial... to bitch slap me through the internet? I'm the telling you <laughs> that the no, no, no. You said that he came into some money. He came into about a, a sum of money from his he, birthday. You know, no, it really was his. I think it really was probably. Can you his. confirm that? Because and it was thinking, Christmas. I'm thinking. Yeah, I totally murdered my grandmother to get her sock drawer money. No, his grandmother's still alive. Okay. Are you still are you talking to her on a regular basis? You're like, how's Bobby? Stop calling me. <laughs> <laughs> Addie's fine now, okay. This Addie's is... over Bobby. So um, all over I'm, Bobby. I'm on all. Oh all... Bobby, <laughs> let me put me all over you. <laughs> you knew I wasn't gonna be polite. I knew you weren't, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm trying okay. to tell the story. So, right, so right, right, he's right. on the phone with me, and he says, "So he's like, hey, let's let's hightail it to Boston and spend all this money and and connect you to a fucking crime. How's that?" I was not thinking. Uh, no, you weren't. Uh, yeah. Little and Addie he, was. And no, he was not thinking either. <laughs> no, he was doing the thinking. Anything to get me closer to your mouth. So you did you agree? You weren't like, yeah, sure. I, I went, all right, yeah, let's do Wait, that. Wait, what was your reaction to him saying we just uh, burned this house down and murdered somebody? <laughs> they didn't burn down the house. <laughs> they, they robbed it and smashed some shit in the house. They, they whatever. And, apples uh, and oranges, man. It's apples not... and oranges. It... You say smash stuff. I say raped a guy and then burned his house to the ground. <laughs> Oh, you horrible person. <laughs> uh, so you didn't even hear the admission of a crime. You All you heard was alone time with Bobby in car. And in Boston. And in Boston. The gayest, friendliest town in the United States. We just decided to hightail it out. Me and four friends in my little Pontiac Grand Prix drove all the way to Boston. How many of them were involved in the um, freaking murdering of that family? <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> okay, so what all of them... Was, by the time we got to Boston, it was too late to actually do anything, and we were too young to actually have any fun. Mm. We didn't even think about this. And we were also too tired and drunk. And we I didn't drive drunk. I, didn't, I got drunk when we got there. Okay. Just, we were too tired and too drunk to drive home. So we oh, ended up getting Addie makes bad decisions. <laughs> Young Addie has made some bad decisions this night. I made a lot of bad decisions up until I was like fucking 29, man. <laughs> I know what your last bad decision was. What's that? Let's do a podcast with Jason. <laughs> This one's going to make people cry unless you make it funny. I'm going to because I'm sure it's going to get worse. But <laughs> since I know that you're an adult and you're you're a decent human being now, I'm not going to fret about it too much. How do you know I'm decent? Unless Bobby really hurts you and then I'm going to murder him. <laughs> uh, don't bother. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of after story I can tell you not in oh. <laughs> okay, so you're now in Boston. You are drunk. It is we, late. We cannot it have is, fun. It is late. It's and boring. And it's boring. And we decided let's just rent a fucking hotel room. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> so what, one room for all four of you? or Wait, it's five. Five. Of you. Five. All five of you. And you're like, so, I need to stop at the lotion store first. The, the lotion and condom store. Hold yeah. on a second. I was slightly responsible. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I, since I was... I got to pick up some room, eucalyptus bomb. <laughs> the room was in my name. Uh, okay. Um, which is evidence, which was evidence. Um, oh, this I'm is foreshadowing funny. now. <laughs> yeah, you are foreshadowing, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was not there. No, where was, apparently where not. Where was God? <laughs> because Jesus would be going, "What the fuck are you thinking? What the fuck are you thinking?" So at this point, what's what's going on is five guys in a hotel room just sitting there finishing off a thirty rack of Rolling Rock, oh my which God. my which my awesome brother had purchased for us because he was were you watching to, porn to drink. No, we just we just laid there in the beds and watched TV and talked about stupid shit and uh, a queer moment. Come in on, the night. get to the hand. Whoa, whoa! There's a queer moment in the night. I meant awkward. Oh, I was, was hoping it was like that... a really queer, like a wandering hand. So no, what, and you what was didn't going know, on? Was... You didn't know which of your friends it was, but you weren't going to turn the hand away. He was laying. We were laying above the covers on on the bed while the other three were laying in the other one. He was. We were in one single, and he uh, looked at me and and he said, "You don't actually think I'm going to lay in bed with you like this, do you?" Yeah. Well, our friends can hear too. Uh huh. And I went, "Whatever. I'll sleep on the fucking floor." Even though I'm, you know, he, he, we essentially got all the way there because of me, and I could have turned him in for a crime. Yeah, a few hours you, even, you didn't even recognize the crime. He was like, yes, and then we eviscerated them, and we we saved the baby killing for last. Hey, you want to go to Boston? You're like, okay. So at that point, I was, I, I, I think it really struck me just how much of a dick this person is. Right then. Yeah. So after all of this, this is so, the moment. I'm going to pull – well, okay, so while I'm doing this and I'm saying, okay, I'll sleep on the fucking floor, we will do – we'll pull a Stephen King moment and show a, a, a different a different uh, place at the same time. Oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. So I had another Are we going to Tatooine? No. Meanwhile, Luke has wandered into the cantina. Yes, there's a side swipe or a circle <laughs> open or whatever. Yeah, whatever. it's a it's... – it's George Lucas, so. <laughs> Back at my home, there is another friend that I had who was a really, really – hes I'm still friends with him. This person is a great person. So this is a true friend. Oh, oh, Jason, actually, now that I think about it, you would love this person. Would I really? Yes, he is Would I leave my wife funny. for him? He is the funniest person on the planet. He is – well, I, aside from you, I apologize. Uh, thank you. I was about to cry. Yeah, it's okay. And if you meet him, you'll like him. But he okay. – he had heard about what had happened, the robbery and everything, and he put it all Oh, I'm together. sure the whole town was, but what's the name of your hometown? What's the name of the hometown? I can't, no, I'm not going to do that. Make one up. May, uh, call it uh, Knucklesberry. That's Wood, good. Knuckles, Woodville. Knuckles, Woodville. 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 I like Knucklesberry better. Woodville. Hornswoggle. Hornswoggle, Massachusetts. Okay. So okay. Hor- in, back in Hornswoggle, my friend... Yeah. My friend, uh, Bilbo. Up another Bilbo? <laughs> <laughs> My friend Bilbo had put two and two together and found uh, out what happened. You know what? He was probably your Jiminy Cricket. He was my Jiminy Cricket. And, and you, I, you did not pay attention to a word. you got to let me get a word in edgewise. I realize you're supposed to interrupt me, but <laughs> the thing is, this person is a better friend to me than that, than, than Bobby ever was. You're lucky you're still friends. I would Yes, so I am lucky I'm still I neglected him as a friend and as a human being, and it was just shitty. And he was back hanging out with my brother, oh. figured out what had happened, and decided, i got to put a stop to this. He is the person who told the police exactly what happened. <gasps> He's a hero, kind he, of. He, In the no, least heroic way. He... The most heroic way. Yeah. By calling the police? By calling the police, telling them what happened, implicating us all in a crime, and yeah, pretty the most much heroic waiting. way would have been foot through the hotel door. He was he was in fucking Massachusetts. he was in central Massachusetts. He couldn't have helped us. <laughs> but I'm just saying he would have driven with your brother in a souped up GTO, well, and your what? brother would be going faster, faster, Bilbo. We've got to get there in time. Yeah. Okay. So sideswipe back to the hotel. <laughs> We wake we wake up and we realize we've had no fun and we've wasted most of the money on the hotel room because the hotel room in Boston is fucking expensive. In case yeah, you guys... where were you staying? 
It was a. Uh, I think it was either the Sheraton or the Radisson. I can't. Oh god! So you go. didn't go like Motel Six. You were like, I oh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go swank. We're going Sheraton. Hi, Hi, is there a bar in there? No, just us <laughs> clinking beers in my backpack up the <laughs> clinkity clink. I wonder what they're gonna do in there. We'll definitely you know, not I'd get film a teenage job. porno. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever write an autobiography, you promise me you'll call it teenage porno. <laughs> That's so, what everybody's calling for. <laughs> so the next morning, nothing has happened. There has been no groping, no gagging, no uh, stumbling into the shower by accident at the same time, no fun hijinks, nothing to masturbate to happen. I didn't see during this. A wink. You, you just everyone else was conked out, and you were like, "Come on, hands, make a move." No, I was like, "I think I'm done." Oh wow! So this was your, this was your eyes waking up moment. Yes. So we drove back home, okay. and the first stop was at his house. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that we noticed when we all got out of the vehicle, we dropped off two friends first. We all got out of the vehicle was his sister hanging out of the window going, Everybody knows what happened, you fucking idiots! You better, <laughs> you better, you better get your ass in here! <laughs> I love he hops, her! Great. He hops in the car, slams the door shut, and says, Get me to your house now! Get me to Wait a minute. Oh. He is demanding that you abade, uh, what, abed a, a criminal. I was already a criminal because I didn't tell anybody and help spend the money. Oh, that's true. You knew. And I was, I, I was over 18, and they were all... But your defense easily could have been, I thought they were joking. Yeah, I understand that could have been my defense, but... You did not scruples. witness... <laughs> Here's the thing. You didn't witness the event... It wasn't like you were standing outside while they went into a stranger's house and you were just leaning well, up against your grand am smoking a cigarette, listening to crashing and women screaming drove, listen, and blood we, we splattering drove, against the wall. Listen, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We <laughs> drove by the house at, on on the way out to going to Boston. Yeah, that's and there were police. there were police officers outside of the house. Outside of the house. Oh, wait. So I knew that they had committed a crime at that house at that point. Uh, you know what? I would have told my friends a joke like that, though. If I had seen police cars outside of a house, I would be like, come on, we got to get out of here. I just robbed that house. But that's no, me. Right. That's just me. All right, but that's not how it went down. Okay, how it went down was you got narked on by your well-intentioned Bilbo. Yes. So we got back to the house, my house, which is not far from his house, where we, where we both were. Wait grew. a minute. How did Bilbo figure it out? How did he know? Because in a small town like the one I grew up in, something yes. like that goes around real quick. Okay. I, There's I only like 40 of you and, you know. I, I had – we had packed a small bag, asked my brother to buy us beer, and he happened to be at the house going, where are you going? And I'm going, like, I'm going to Boston. And he was like, where'd you get money? And I was like, oh, we just got it. Wow, fucking implicate yourself even more. Well, he was – he's smarter than me. <laughs> you, went to the, you went to the bathroom, you're like – don't pay attention to me. The blood won't come off my hands. The blood won't come off my hands. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you are sadistic. <laughs> but I love you anyway. Whatever. You're, this is getting worse and it worse. Is. So, so the awesome sister is hanging out the window going, You fuckers are going to jail! You're like I this. She, she, had the biggest, you. she had the biggest pair of tits in the whole high school. You'd so like her that. tits were shouting in? <laughs> yes, her, her tits were shouting out the window. <laughs> was that how she lived, was hanging out of everything because her tits were so heavy? I mean, how does that relate to her shouting? Out of the, the podcast. I'm Just... not. That's staying in. We said tits. <laughs> I can now put that as one of the as one of the search words. Why do I want to take that out, Bo? Oh, just cause. Cause she'll say, "Hey, he didn't mention just, my name." Just and no on one... the off chance that that somehow this gets found, it's vague enough that it could be uh, anything that happens in any small town in any part of New England. So yeah, we don't want Swoozy Big Tits McGee suing us over a podcast where nobody knows my name. Yeah, all right. Yeah, keep no it one knows your name. There. You're making up the name of the town. You've made up the name of everybody involved. All right, so Tits McGee. <laughs> okay, so Tits uh, Tits McGee is hanging out the window screaming. And, we and, go he, back says, and he says, oh, we've got a leg at uh, Amscray to your house, bub. And I went, yeah, see, I'm, we ought to get you out of here and save your life. Because I'm yeah, so stupidly yeah. in love with you like a fucking idiot. Yeah, I'll see? take you to my house. My dad doesn't care what I do. 
No, my my father was definitely genuinely pissed. Oh, I'm sure he was once once uh, everything. I walked. Fell well, through. he wasn't home at that point. Uh, I think he was still. He was at. So work. the coast was clear. Ever there was no one home. What well, now? He at this back. point, was it just you and him, or was it still the five of you grouped together? No, we had dropped off the other friends, so it was just he and. Oh, I well, how come they home. didn't panic? They didn't panic because they didn't know anyone new. Wait a minute! You dropped them off first. He was the last one to be dropped off. You're extending the amount. Of, no, no. You, by this time, you're over him, right? You're uh, like, oh, oh, I'm kind of. I'm kind of, but I'm like, oh, I'm in rescue mode. Oh, okay. Like somehow You'll driving love me to my if house, <laughs> driving to my house, which is a mile away, will somehow <laughs> rescue him from police officers yeah, who also like, have vehicles. Quick, and... quick! Yeah, it'll be like, quick, quick! The cops are coming. Strip off all your clothes and get underneath my bed. Mm. He's like, what? Just do it. Yeah. So anyway, what? <laughs> this, this is going to be the longest podcast we have so far. I don't care. So <laughs> now you are home. He's he you you're all by yourselves. She okay. So the fa his father calls my house, mm -hmm. and he says, "Is Bobby there?" And I have no choice but to say, "Yeah." And he he he's this is Sunday. I remember distinctly that it was a Sunday, and his father the was Lord's at, Day. His father was at church. He called, I think he called from the church, I don't know, I can't remember, but he called, I mean, cell phones existed, but they didn't, they weren't, like, in prevalent use everywhere. Yeah, know? he had a backpack on. Yeah. Cell phone. And he was, like, he, yelling he called into a and He came by the house, and he said, he, he was actually very nice to me, he said, I need to take that home. <gasps> Ooh! Oh, yeah. He has been, he has had his personhood removed. Yeah, he and. He has now become an object. The object you know, had you turn offended it into, his own father so many You turn things times. into objects because it makes them easier to kill. <laughs> I think I believe that his father at that point was so absolutely distraught with everything that was going on with his son that he was not even angry with me. Well, you know, it's also it breaks your heart. It would break my heart if I my son ever if I ever found out my son had committed a crime like that. Yeah, I think that he was also just just fed up, and he said, "You stay here." Eddie, it, I'm gonna take care of my son. We oh my God! And He's behind, gonna... and I looked out the window and parked behind him. Behind him was a police officer. Oh wow! So I'm sorry, he parked in front of him because the police officer came as an escort in front to make sure that we all left peacefully or whatever. Drama. He went into his father's car, went to the police station. I talked to the police officer outside, and he says, "You need to follow me in your car." So I wasn't being arrested at this point. No, you weren't. Yeah, they weren't yeah, arrested. So they were more pissed at everybody else because they were involved in the break-in, but he didn't know how I was implicated in the crime. Now, had they nabbed the other guys? Uh, yes. Okay, then they probably squealed. I don't actually know. They probably turned on them real quick. I bet they. I bet they all lied because what what happened was I was brought in and they were they brought me into a a room and they said, "Look, we need to talk to you for a minute because this is what's going to happen. You don't have a lawyer." And you are over 18. These other guys, they have, they're going to have lawyers because their parents already called. They already know what's going on. Your father right. just found out what's going on. Oh, shit. So this is how it's going to go down. You tell us what happened, and we won't arrest you. Yeah, I. well, the thing is, I didn't know that what I should have done was got arrested and kept my mouth shut. But the you, thing you was... Should have, what you should have said is, I'm no, not no, going to no, say no. anything until I talk to my lawyer. And No, but actually, the truth is, what I should have done was what I did do. Because... I was so done with this fucking asshole. Is this when you first came out? Was no, no, this no. how you came out? You're like, no. number one, I am gay. And I am in love with Bobby, the man <laughs> in the other holding cell. If only that were the... They would have been like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> they, they would have been like, get, to de get Detective Jenks in here. This is going to be a great story. Can we get candy first? Because we all want to listen to it. Yes, this would have Don't. been Addie's first story. <laughs> Inversion part one. It would have been so awesome. One of my teachers uh, happened to be a police officer first and a teacher. And, and he said, was in the room? No, he was he was out in the waiting room, and I said, can you do me a favor? This is going to be much easier if you bring him in here, because he was one of my favorite teachers. I'll talk what, to did him. Did you have a crush on him? No, he was just a cool guy. He was. A, and what's his name, Mr. Cool Guy? Mr. Cool Please, Guy. Thank you, Officer, Mr. Cool Guy. Officer, Officer Cool, cool guy. guy. Okay, so I, they brought in Officer Cool Guy, and I, I sat there, <laughs> and I said, listen, Mr. Cool Guy, instead of Officer Cool Guy, I, I got to tell you this because you're a face that I see every day at school, so 
can you do this? And he's like, yeah, you're taking me off another case. This was fucking stupid what you did, so all right. Yeah, I was just about to crack the serial murder case. I was two seconds away from finding out who was responsible for all 18 of these mysterious deaths. But okay, I'll handle this B&E. But he knew you, and you knew him. And I said I was crying. And he is a cool guy. So I were you crying? I was. I started to cry when they said arrest. Oh wow! Yeah, they're I've like got... this guy's gonna sing like a canary. Yeah, yeah. And I was also done. I was. I, I yeah, was done. You were this done, in, in the, done in the worst way. What I mean, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, so Jiminy I... had left years ago. At this point, he was like, "Fuck all this. I'm gonna find someone else." You don't listen to a fucking word I say. Where's Bilbo? Was Bilbo? Bilbo no, Bilbo worried? went home. Okay. So I sat, I proceeded to tell him the story, and he said, okay. And he said, all right, well, you can go home. I told him everything. Except, so he told the truth. The, he, was, he, told, you, he told the truth. He said, just tell us what you know. And, and, you won't, and we won't have a problem. I think that they realized that at this point, I, I, I think that, that honestly, this situation is probably the part that put me smack into the idea of adulthood. Mm. Where I need to get my shit together, where I can't be lofty and ridiculous and having fun all the time and fucking... This is the death of your childhood story? This isn't a first love. This isn't an unrequited love story. This is a Wonder Years story. I <laughs> fully expect... Um, what's his name? Not Howard Stern. What's his... The guy who did the Wonder Years coming on and going... And it was that <laughs> oh, Daniel moment. Stern? Yeah, Daniel Stern. And it was at that moment that I realized that being a man meant taking responsibility. Which was what I was doing. So they <laughs> sent me home, and I went and talked to my father about what happened. Now, he was probably pissed. Oh, he was pissed, but at this point... I, he he was knew just what thinking, was going on. You, you've never gotten in trouble. I don't know what the fuck just happened. So he, what he did was instead of talking to me, he called all the all the other people's parents. Oh. And he was just talking to me. He's like, and and I remember distinctly hearing him downstairs going, "I think it's the fact that there's nothing to do in this fucking town." And what <laughs> I remember, I remember him saying this four separate times, and each parent going, "Yeah, uh, I yeah. know exactly what you mean." Um, all right. So he called the other parents, and they were like. Yeah, I went, to, I went to bed, and uh, this was the end of our vacation. This was the Sunday day at the end of the 12, 12 or 15-day vacation that everybody got in the middle of the year, and then the new semester started. So what, what it essentially came down to was I am terrified to go back to school, and I have to because I know what's going to happen. Wait, and was Bobby they, arrested? Were any of no, them arrested? No, none of them were arrested because they they all gave spilled their beans and whatever they put together they they probably backed it against my story which was yeah, But you they know, still committed a fucking crime. Yeah. Just because you admit to it that's not how Yeah, but you don't understand works. the hoity toity town that I live in. Each one of them probably had I I know that two of them had lawyers. And and you just go lawyer, and the cops in the town go, oh, fuck, fuck you, and you're you're fucking five hundred grand a year, <laughs> fuck you, fucking people. So not only is Bobby a loathsome cunt, no, 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 he's a he rich was, loathsome. No, 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 he was poor. How did he get away with it? They just they said he's too young to be arrested. He spilled the beans. We'll just deal with it after and bring him to bring him to to court when when it's done. They gotta. They so all that. of these assholes are going to show up at school on Monday. All of these assholes will not. No, see, he's the only one that's an asshole. Well, oh, the other okay. two, they robbed that. I'm just saying, the other two were not assholes. They would just happen to be guilt, guilt. No, bodies. they're just delinquents who smash up other people's shit. Yeah, and one person, another one of them, was not even involved in the crime. Oh, they were just. He was roped in, like you were roped in. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, he didn't. How much you want to make a bet that Bobby fucked that other guy on top of the debris inside that house? <laughs> just to add insult to injury he's like oh smashing this stranger's stuff makes me so hot James me too Bobby let's fuck on his broken stuff <laughs> let's pop fuck my on black cherry Bobby <laughs> oh, that, that, okay so no, you know what? Because Bobby's such an asshole that he would have said that in the car. He's like, you know what we just did, and you're like, what? We just uh, robbed, uh, smashed up, and robbed that house. Oh, and I fucked James, and you'd be like, oh. 
Now drive us to Boston. Okay. <laughs> oh, that one actually hurt. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I just want you to shut up because this is still. I got a lot of story left. Hour two. Go. Okay. So yeah, now you're back at school. I remember walking in and going to my first class, and everybody's staring at me. Everyone in the hallways, every single person from freshman year all the way to senior. You're knew, finally popular. Exactly. <laughs> it, yeah. I knew exactly what had happened and how it happened. Uh -huh. And I think, that, I think that the majority of them had also figured out why I went along with this. Nobody said anything. Well, not till later. But nobody said anything, but I think also everyone had also figured out why why would he go along with this. I wasn't I wasn't like I wasn't like nobody beat me up or anything. They, yeah. they, they, everybody knew who I was. I just wasn't really popular. I wasn't talking to you know, I was yeah, just yeah. that guy. Yeah. And they that knew guy me. who is always on the time trying to make the make on Bobby. No, that was not your rep. You were not the, the no, poor, it was not my the, rep. That poor guy was in love with Bobby. Why? No, and I think that that's what got put together afterwards. But you can't confirm this because no one ever said that to your face. Uh, Bilbo did. <laughs> that, well, Bilbo, fine, but Bilbo's more intuitive, and he's a fucking hero. And number two, most of the other people were probably thinking, that poor dumb guy. Poor dumb uh, Atticus. So this is what's going on in my head. Oh, in your head, you're like, everybody knows, everybody knows, everybody knows. So I go and sit down in the first class, and then pop people are to tap me on the shoulder, like, what the fuck happened? What did you guys do? Come and on, you man. should have said, oh. Bobby and James fucked on some guy's broken stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been like, they smoked a whole bunch of meth. I can't they... believe he's fucking queer. Let's kill him. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had been that cool then. I only had to become Atticus Blake in order for that shit to happen. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm I'm actually the same person. No, in, in the meantime, life. you're you're well. Now, which I one? Am, I am I am shaking, terrified. Which thought is is freaking you out more? The fact that they know about your connection to the crime, or the thought that they know that you're gay? That and also the fact that they that I everyone is actually paying attention to me. The rumors, probably the just, idea of other people talking about me behind. Just my the face. idea that people are talking about you and not necessarily in a positive fashion. Yeah. Okay. And at that moment, it comes crashing down on me. This person is the worst friend I've ever had. Look at the trouble I've gotten myself myself into, not he right. got me into, myself, mm -hmm. uh, accepting responsibility for what I've done, mm -hmm. understanding that, that I am better than this, and right. that I am an adult. I, I yes. looked at the teacher before she stood up to start class, and I said, I need to go to the principal's office. <gasps> and she said... Okay, is everything okay? Is she because she knew what had happened as well. <laughs> I got to go. I'm sorry. And you I should walked, have said I, I have walked. nine more crimes to confess to. <laughs> <laughs> I I walked directly out of class. <laughs> and I said and and I said goodbye to everyone in the classroom. I remember distinctly <laughs> acting like oh my I was God, that's so sad. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so like, said, uh, like you're I going said, to the fucking guillotine. That is the most melodramatic shit I've ever heard. I said, "Bye, guys. I hope I see you around." And <gasps> I went, I went to the principal's office, and he was standing at the door, and he goes, "Hey, what's going on?" And I said, "Can I talk to you in your office?" And he goes, "Absolutely, you can." The whole school's buzzing about you, and he put his hand around my shoulder and brought. Oh me my in. god, was he that he, happy? No, no, no. He he was actually. I by the end, I, re, I I mean, I always thought he was a dick, but he was he was pretty cool about what happened. So I walked in and I said, I can't be here anymore. I'm 18 years old. I gotta say bye. And he said, Well, there's nothing I can do to stop you. He wow. said, And I hope I hope everything works out well for you. But bye. And as I'm walking out, okay, as I'm walking out, Bilbo's mother is in the office. And I said, Hey, Mrs. Bilbo, because I called her. <laughs> Mrs. Her Bilbo. I said, hey, Mrs. Bilbo, what's going on? She goes, well, Bilbo hasn't shown up to school for three for, for the past, like, three months, and I didn't even know it. What? <laughs> you knew, didn't you? He wasn't at I, school? I, I knew, and I looked at her, and I was like, oh, shit, you just finally found out because you're fucking weird. <laughs> oh, no, did you say that, you fucking, you blind <laughs> no, bitch? No, no. You didn't understand what was going on? 
so in 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 he he had turned eighteen before me, I think, and oh. apparently what had happened was he dropped out and didn't tell her. Oh my God! You know, I turned eighteen before uh before uh I graduated and I didn't drop out. Gra- granted, yeah, I turned eight- going to graduate. I turned I turned eighteen two weeks before graduation, so mm. I should have. I had good grades. I should have just gone. I'm not doing it. He w- he wasn't going to graduate. I wasn't going to, and I said, "Well, all right, I'll give. I'll tell him to give you a call if I see him." Because apparently oh, he hadn't be been home in a story while. If too. Him and Bilbo fall in love. No, Bilbo got married to his wife. I couldn't do it. He, I, I was never attracted to Bilbo. Why was he dumpy? Was no, he, I just, I just, no, like no, no. He's one of those friends that you're around for so long. It's like your brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I could call him right now and have a have a. I could have the same conversation I'm having with you right now. Oh, okay. yeah, but and he he's heard it all. He's he like, would ah. do what you're doing. He's like, yeah, that was fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking stupid. I could laugh at you because it was so fucking stupid. So it stupid. turns out both of you are delinquents. You are an infamous getaway driver, and he is a dropout. Mm. And so was I at that point. So I walked out. Now, did you leave because you just couldn't face Bobby? I or you face, just couldn't face I the couldn't school? Face him and I couldn't face the rest of the school, and also I wanted to be. I, I want. I think it made me feel mature to be like John Bender and be like, "Fuck you!" Oh <laughs> but you didn't do that. You were like, "I'm leaving. You can't stop me by." Pretty and much. The principal was like, "Okay, like yeah. big skin well, off yeah, my nose." Could, he couldn't do anything about it either. Yeah. Yeah. No, he couldn't. You're a legal adult. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, so, that means something completely different. You huh? walked out of school and straight into the nearest gay bar, and you're like, I'm 18! I walked out of school and directly into my ex-wife. Oh, <laughs> no. That's not, no, that's but still... But the story cool. isn't over, and I know we're over 45 minutes. It doesn't now. matter. Keep going. Uh, a couple of weeks later, uh, I, apparently the, the rest of the parents and, and Bobby's parents had put together, they said, yeah, you guys aren't allowed to see each other or hang out with each other or call each other or anything. For well, wait Bobby. a minute. Like, Bobby's you're the reason. bad influence? No, no, no. All of us were... It was all... All of us were not allowed to call each other. Oh, any, okay. Any of the other. So it wasn't. It wasn't that. So any, anyway, none of us had called each other for weeks, and then I get this phone call. Oh, middle, it's like Bobby. around ten o'clock at night. I know it's Bobby. It's Bobby. He's so alone. What he have calls, I done with my life? <laughs> he calls me up. Yes. And he says, "My father's really hounding me. Can you get me out of the house?" I said, well, "I'm not allowed to fucking see you." And he says, "I'll just walk down the road. Can you come pick me up? I just really need to get out of here." And I'm thinking, you know what? Now's the time to murder him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on. Like, yes, I'll pick you up, Bobby. Rat me out, will you? No, he didn't rat me out. He didn't do shit. That's Bilbo. I know, Bilbo. I know. That's Bilbo. <laughs> Bilbo, your friend. Okay, so he calls and he's like, dude, let's pick up where we left off, basically. And I was thinking, I miss my friend. Why not just hang out? <gasps> No, Addy. So he he snuck out of his window and he came and slept over and it was just like it was like when we were first friends again. Yeah. Like we just hung out, talked about movies and school yeah. and shit yeah. and uh-huh. and then he he said, "All right, I'm just going to call my dad, tell him that I'm going to my aunt's. Can you drop me off there?" And so I did. And that you know, this was after like a cool night of hanging out. So his right. So essentially, I the the next morning after I had dropped him off, uh, the cops came by my house. They come by my house, and the officer gets out of his car and he says, "Come here. What are you doing? You gotta come down to the, the police station." No. Yeah. No. So why well, he said drive? Because they're not. I mean, they they. It's a small town. They're not. That's gonna not what I'm saying. No about. What? You're fucking kidding me. What? Okay, keep going. So I, I went down to the police station, and the police chief brought me in, and he said, you got to sit down. He goes, look, I understand that you've had a lot on your plate, but this needs to be made clear. You are over 18, and he is just under 18. That makes him a minor. The charges that are being put against you because of the incident before uh-huh. are contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Holy shit. He said... If you, and he goes, I know that you had him over your house last night. I know that you dropped him off at his aunt's, and his father is still not mad at you. He said, but if you go anywhere near him ever again, or within within the time frame until he's an adult, you will be arrested. Do you understand? Holy shit! 
his father his father had essentially threatened to press charges against me and i said you know what i'm done i'm absolutely done absolutely 100% 100% done and he looked at me and goes good and then because... officer cool guy said you said that last time liar no i didn't say that to him i, know. I told him what happened I know. Like I didn't settle listen. down officer uh, officer Officer Cool Guy's boss looked at me and said, "Look, Captain Mean Guy." <laughs> he said, "Even though you dropped out, and he know he knew that I dropped out. This is how small a town it is. Uh huh. He knew that I dropped out because he was also the principal." <laughs> no, no. He looks at me and he goes, "You still have things going for you. Just move the fuck on. This is not this is not a point where you need to stop and lose everything. Just move on, okay?" This kid is not worth your time. That's what he said to me. <laughs> wow. The end? No. Oh. Is there another incident where, where no, no, I was no, 29 no, no, no. and I got a call from Bobby and he's like, hey, I can't handle this shit. And uh, could you pick me up? And when you did, he's covered in blood. <laughs> and he's like going to no, I wanted to tell I, I just wanted to end with the fact that the, when we got to court finally, it was just me. Uh, because I was doing separately, I was in adult court. Mm -hmm. um, the officer who had brought me up on the charges, who had laid down the charges, uh, he stood there and he looked at the judge and he said, just let this guy go. He's had this hanging over his head for three months. And we think things. he's gay, he's got a big enough burden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well no, he didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to drop all of this because I think he's a good guy. He didn't. He just kind of got in a guilt by association, did some stuff, and he's he's never been in trouble before. He hasn't been in trouble since, so mm. we're okay. If this happened in New York City, you'd still be in jail. You know that, right? <laughs> Okay, that's it. Did Atticus win? I don't think he did. But if he did, congratulations to him. If I won, I am still awesome. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in once again and listening to another hair-raising story of romance, adventure, delinquency, beer drinking, masturbation, the murder of the family, fucking on broken shit. I mean, this story had everything, didn't it? And if you want to hear more, then please... Sub to our SoundCloud channel station, whatever they call it. Do that. And like the thing. And, and let us know if you like the story or if you didn't like the story or you want two other people in here. Because if that's the case, why the fuck are you even listening to this goddamn show? Thank you, everybody. And until next time, this has been Jason Harding. And I am Addie Blake. See you guys Good. later. I hope this wasn't too depressing. <laughs> it wasn't. Bye, guys. <laughs>